everyone. I welcome you all to another video by Legacy IS where we are going to talk about and understand why India still has this phrase of colonial hangover. Why are we still referred to a country which has this legacy of the British continuing till date? It is a lot to do with the foundation of the Indian society, the Indian polity and constitution which is so much influenced, reflected and based out of the British constitution. How basically we learn so many things from the British constitutions, their systems of administration, the influences and hence a lot of our features have not only been borrowed but we are very similar in political terms with the British constitution. But of course, there are also a lot of variation, a lot of differences and that is because the Constituent Assembly took a lot of pain, took a lot of effort in ensuring that we have principles which suit our needs, our priorities and requirements. So in that sense, we have a constitution which is basically having the best of all yet suited to our needs and customized to our situations. So in that sense, let us understand this particular comparison between the Indian and the British constitution. Now, as far as the features that are there, which we have borrowed directly from this particular constitution, first and foremost is a parliamentary form of government. Now, you all know that in India with the three organs that we have of executive, legislative and judiciary. We have a parliamentary form of a government which is the legislative organ of the country. All right. And the executive is the one which is a part of the legislature. The executive is dependent upon the legislature for uh, getting a lot of clearances. It owes a lot of its uh, support on the lower house. So it stays in office only till it enjoys the confidence in the lower house of the parliament. So in that sense, this kind of a system where you have a prime minister as the real head of the government, okay, with its council of ministers and all of them aiding and advising the executive head of the state, which is the president in the center. The same system has been replicated in the states with the governor, the chief minister and the council of ministers. That is a principle which we've actually taken and understood and adopted well from the British system. We also have a system of rule of law which is very evident in Article 14 of the Indian Constitution in our discussion of fundamental rights. It is a policy, it is an idea which has been espoused by A.V. Dicey and how we've used it directly in our constitution is a reflection of the features borrowed. We also have the way in which the legislative procedure takes place in terms of the way in which we have our sessions in the parliament, in the legislative bodies, the way in which we pass our bills. We have a lot of influence from the British constitution and the parliamentary practices. There is a provision of single citizenship this is a principle which suited our needs in spite of being a federal nation and in spite of having division of powers, giving some of the powers to the states. We also have single citizenship because our history was such that given a choice, we still fear that states might want to secede from India. So to protect our territorial integrity in the national, in national integrity, we actually have single citizenship as adopted from the British constitution. We also have a cabinet form of government and this system is basically where you have a core body having the most important ministries in a way having the most important tasks that the government has to perform and that in the form of a cabinet form of government is something that's very very functional and powerful in India. We have the provision of writs that is something which makes the fundamental rights extremely fundamental. The fact that judiciary can step in, use its checks and balances and ensure that fundamental rights are being enforced in the correct manner, which acts as a limiting power upon the executive and the legislature, is a novel feature which we've picked up from the British constitution. There are a lot of parliamentary privileges which are being enjoyed by the members of the parliament, all right, and they uh, include some criminal privileges, some, uh, or rather privileges in, in terms of criminal cases or when they're convicted for some civil cases and even freedoms like right to speech and expression. All right. So in that sense, there are some privileges that the members enjoy by being part of this parliament. 
we have a system of bicameralism whereas we have a lower house of the parliament representing the democratic fundamentals of the country whereas the upper house or the house of elders which is representing the federal character and supporting the federal character of the country so this bicameral legislature is also to ensure and helps in a country as large like india to ensure that we don't have hasty bills being passed and always there's a check by one house on the other so this is also a practice which has been adopted in some of the states whereas few states in india also have a legislative council besides these features which we have borrowed there are a lot of similarities which of course are there in between india and uk and the constitutions as i told you we have some of the systems which are include parliamentary rule of law and cabinet form of government we also have a similarity in terms of the way in which our prime minister is appointed he is of course first elected as an a member of the parliament and then the leader who enjoys the confidence in the lower house of the parliament is the one by the executive head is appointed as the prime minister of the country and then he is asked to make his own council of ministers that is another similarity that we have between the two countries the position that is there of the prime minister with regards to being the real head the de facto head is also something that similar and that draws its position from the parliamentary form of government we have a system whereby the civil servants the backbone of the entire administration of the country the one who are responsible for policy formulation as well as implementation are the one who are selected and they serve till they retire so there's a certain amount of security of tenure as far as civil servants are concerned it is an important step to ensure their independence and their impartiality all right so that is another feature which we are similar i also told you about legislature the next is with regards to the independence of the judiciary and also the security of tenure of these judges the whole idea whereby we don't have a system as strong and distinct of checks and balances and separation of powers like the presidential form which is there in united states of america but we still have a very strong judiciary with a mind of their own very well read and interpreting the constitution only to ensure that the country functions properly according to the constitution now in order to do that their independence is primary so there is a fixed procedure for their appointment for their removal and their salary is not and conditions of service are actually not you know minimized to their disadvantage after they join or office after they start working so that is something which ensures impartiality and independence of the judiciary we also have a system of elections which is called the first past the post system which is adopted largely in india for direct elections because of its ease of a uh, performance because of the ease it with which it can be understood the counting can be done and it just makes the entire democratic system much more participative all right so this is also a system which we have similar to the british or the uk constitution but there are of course substantial amount of differences which are also there between the two countries the constitution to begin with india has one of the longest written constitutions of the world whereas with uk you have an unwritten constitution largely based out of conventions so the uk constitution is much more evolutionary in nature whereas it keeps on changing some things can add and subtract we do have the system of dynamism but broadly ours was the one which was framed by the constituent assembly and it was kind of kept intact in that form the constitution of uk because it's so evolutionary in character is much more flexible in compared to as compared to the constitution of india so in that sense on a comparative basis our constitution is much more flexible but of course if we compare it to other constitutions it might come across as rigid so in that sense uh, we have constitution which uh, is basically reflecting both flexible as well as rigid characteristic whereas the uk constitution is much more flexible compared to us they don't really have an intact form difficult procedures of amendment okay 
A major difference that is there between the Indian and the UK constitution is how the head of the state is brought to power or comes to power. As far as UK is concerned, it's hereditary, it's dynasty based, it's family based, okay, where the heir is the one who comes to power as successor. Whereas in a republican form of government like India, we have an elected head of the state. Even though it's indirect election, but we do have an element of election being involved. So that is a major difference between these two nations. All right. We uh, are looking at UK having much unitary features of the constitution, whereas we have a division of power. Of course, critically, it is said that we have a quasi-federal uh, you know, system whereby we have lot of unitary bias in the federal features but at the same time we still have a good amount of division of power for administrative convenience for participatory model all right for better forms of governance that is something that is not as vibrantly present in uk you also need to understand the size with which we are talking the size of uk the population okay uh, as compared to india so that actually is one of the reasons responsible for this kind of feature we also have a system whereby there is a large amount of parliamentary sovereignty that is there in the UK, whereas in India, the legislative powers, the executive powers of the parliament are quite limited by the different provisions that are mentioned in the constitution with respect, uh, with respect to how conduct of uh, judges cannot be discussed unless there is a procedure for impeachment uh, with respect to elections. All right. Uh, so here in UK, we have sovereignty with regards to uh, the parliament that kind of a superseding power is not being given in India even though it also has a parliamentary form of government. So we have borrowed these principles but there is a substantial amount of tweaking that is being done, customization that has been done to suit our priorities and our needs. There is also an important role of conventions which is there in UK much larger than it is there in India. The way in which secularism is practiced in the UK is very different from the way in which it is done in India. Uh, in, in UK, you actually have almost uh, large sections of the population practicing Christianity. The state also supports Christianity. But in India, we actually, there is no one state religion and all religions are treated equally and equal support is being provided to them. We also have the Prime Minister coming from the House of the Parliament, the, uh, the different houses of uh, the, in UK. We also have the Prime Minister of UK coming from the lower house and also uh, whereby in India it can be from either house of the parliament. There are hereditary members which are present in the UK parliament, which means that they will be there for years together. But our Indian system of uh, parliamentary form or Indian uh, members, MPs who are there in the parliament, they are basically the ones only who stay in office once they are elected. In India, we have the system of directive principles whereby we have some provisions of the constitution which are actually treated as ideals which cannot be directly implemented today but uh, they are something which Indian government and Indian society espouses for future. There is no such system present in the British or the UK constitution. So these are the areas of differences that we have between the two constitutions in spite of having a colonial hangover. We have done our bit in ensuring that this constitution is ours even though there are a lot of features which are borrowed. So I hope you have enjoyed this discussion. Please let us know by liking the video, sharing and subscribing with your friends. Thank you so much.